Hello viewers, you are welcome to another edition of Learning Me Easy, powered by The Rock Tutors. I'm Shegun Toba Akinun, and I'll be taking us a subject called government. We have skillfully and patiently prepared and solved questions and answers in preparation for the forthcoming UTME examination. Now before we proceed, do not forget to hit the notification bell and also subscribe on our YouTube channel at The Rock Tutors. Thank you. Work with me. Now to the first question. A group of people who possess and wield the power of suzerainty over others is dash. Now, I don't want you to misconstrue suzerainty and sovereignty. In government, sovereignty refers to the ultimate, absolute, supreme, total, unrestrained, unregulated, and undivided power of a state to do what? to make and enforce laws without external control. So sovereignty applies to a political entity that has obtained independence. But suzerainty refers to the control of an external entity over a new entity entirely. Just like Britain you know, exuded suzerainty over Nigeria. Did they grant us limited self-rule at the regional level whereby we had premiers at the, at, the, at the level of the regions, yes. But were we independent then? No. So suzerainty has to do with something like colonialism, something like imperialism. And if you look at the options here, it won't be governments, it won't be power, it won't be rulers, it will be what? Imperialists. Mind you, if you don't come across imperialists, it can also mean what? Colonialists. Now to the second question. A group of people who provide direction and legislate on behalf of an autonomous entity. You see this question, we have to take it bit by bit. It says, providing direction and legislating. You know, one might be quick to think the answer is legislature. Now, which entity or agency leg legislates? That is the legislature. And what is legislation? Legislation in government refers to the process of making laws. Now, I'll take that again. Legislation can refer to laws or the process of making laws. So, but the question is not asking for only legislation. It is also asking for the body, you know, responsible for providing direction. Providing direction has to do with, you know, generating and formulating policies. Is that clear? Now, it says on behalf of an autonomous entity. An autonomous entity refers to an independent entity, a sovereign entity. So before 1960, was Nigeria autonomous? No, because we were not yet independent. So October 1, 1960, we became sovereign, we became independent, we became autonomous, and we received the power to govern ourselves. Now to the question. A group of people who provide direction, that is, formulate policies, and legislate, that is, make laws on behalf of an autonomous entity, that is, a country, is dash. A says legislation. It can't be legislation because legislation does not refer to a group, refer to a group of people. B says executive. Had it been the question stopped at providing direction, that is, formulating policies, it could have been B. The executive in any sovereign state is responsible for formulating policies and implementing and executing policies. It won't be judiciary. Why won't it be judiciary? Judiciary does it judiciary is not responsible for providing and formulating policies. Now, what's the correct answer here? The correct answer here is government. So let's take the question now. Government refers to a group of people, you know who are responsible for formulating policies and making laws on behalf of autonomous entity. And what's that power called? That's the power of sovereignty. That's about sovereignty. Sovereignty refers to the supreme power of a state to make and enforce laws, you know, over a group of people without external control, without external interference, without external intervention. Is that clear? Now to the next question. A group of people who share common interests and are interrelated is dash. Now, we have certain concepts in government that relates to a group of people. A state refers to a group of people. That's one. A nation refers to a group of people, too. 
Nation state refers to a group of people, three. A, a society refers to a group of people, that's four. Political party refers to a group of people, five. Prayer group refers to a group of people, six. Now, where do they differ? Come with me. It says a group of people who share common interests and are interrelated. So three things are important here. It consists of a group of people. They have same interests and they are related. A nation consists of a group of people, but they don't share common interests. What do they share? They share common culture, common custom, common tradition. An example of a nation is Yoruba nation, Ijo nation, Ishakiri nation, Aousa nation, Igbo nation, Tiv nation, Jokun nation, Wukari nation, and so on and so forth. So it won't be a nation. What do they share? They share common culture. It won't be a community. It will not be a state. Why won't it be a state? A state refers to a politically organized group of people occupying a definite geographical territory under an organized government, free from external control, recognized by other states, and with power to make and enforce laws without external control. So do they share the same interest in a state? No. So the answer here is society. Now, what's society? A society refers to, number one, a group of people. Number two, those group of people, they are interconnected. How are they interconnected in a complex network? And what do they share? They share the same interest. An example of a society is the Christian society. You know, you can have somebody from Brazil who is a Christian, you know, sharing the same faith, the same interest with somebody from Malagasy, with somebody from Antigua, with somebody from Kazakhstan, with somebody from Kyrgyzstan. So the correct answer here is D, society. Now to the next question. A group of people who share common norms and customs is dash. You know, I was actually referring to this in the, in the prior question. While a society refers to a group of people who share common interests, nation, on the other hand, refers to a group of people who share common culture in governments. When a group of people share common culture, we do say that they are what? They are homogeneous. Homogeneous is, from the, is, is derived from these two words, homo and genus. Homo means one. And genus is from the word nature. So people with the same nature, the same custom, the same tradition, the same language. Is that clear? So a group of people who share common norms and customs is that. The answer is nation. But you have to know that in a nation, they don't yet have what? Independence. Is that clear? So the correct answer here is what? Nation. It can be society because society have common interests, not common custom. It can be religious groups. Religious groups have common faith, not common norms and customs. Is that clear? So the correct answer is what? B, nation. Now to the next question. A group of people who share a common territory under a defined leadership is dash. It is not a society. Why? A society consists of people who share similar interests. But we are looking at a group of people who have common territory. I told you that somebody can come from India and belong to the same society as somebody from Canada. Are you getting me now? Just like the Oboni society, just like the literary society, just like the academic society, the, the medical society, and so on and so forth. So a society is larger than a state. It is not bounded by what? By a territory. Is that clear? So A is nullified. It is not a... It is not a nation, because a nation does not have a defined leadership. Is that clear? They only have a, a, a common culture. Are they independent? No. Is Yoruba nation independent? No. Since it is not independent, can it have a government? It cannot. It is under a country. It is not nation states. Why it why the question to be a group of people who have the same culture, sharing common territory? Under a defined leadership, the answer would have been nation states. But since we are not asked a question like this, that a group of people who share common culture, the question is just a group of people who share common territory. So the answer is states. But since we don't have states, what is the next correct answer here? Country. So in government, states refers to countries. Is that clear? Now to the next question. A group of people who share common franchise objectives. You know in government, what is franchise? Franchise refers to the right to vote and be voted for. What's another word for franchise? That is suffrage. Is that clear? 
So we are being asked that a group of people who share common franchise objectives, you know, they, they are united in their political agenda. Are you getting me now? So which human association, which group consists of people with same political agenda and same political objective? Are you getting now? The answer is political party. So the correct answer here is what? B. Now to the next question. A group of people who share a common social industrial goal is that? This question is tricky. This question is about prayer group. But you won't say prayer group here. But you have to know that another word for prayer group is occupational group. Another word for occupational group is associational group. Now, what is a prayer group? A prayer group refers to a group of persons who are organized. Are you getting me now? What are they organized around? A particular objective. And what is that objective? To influence government policies for the benefit of their members. Now, what binds people in a prayer group together? Their work, their objective. And what is that objective? Is it to win election or to form government? No. What is the objective? It is to better their lot around their work. Are you getting me now? So the question says a group of people who share a common socio-industrial group goal. Industry has to do with occupational goal. Is that clear? Work-related goal. And what is that? It is a prayer group. And since we do not have prayer group here, what is the next related thing to prayer group here? Occupational group. If you don't see occupational group, what can you pick? Associational group or interest group. So the correct answer is D. Now to the next question. A group of people who share a common boundary, custom, and under an autonomous government is that. You see, this question is not polity. Why is it no policy? Policy refers to how a state is politically organized. I'll take it again. Policy refers to the political, administrative, and governmental system of a state. So when you say that there is too much corruption in the Nigerian policy, it means there is too much corruption in the political system of a country. It goes ipso facto to say that Polity refers to the political system of a state. But we are not being asked for the political system of a state. So its A is nullified. It won't be B. Why won't it be B? The question says a group of people will share common boundary. A state has common boundary. A state has autonomous government. But a state does not necessarily share common custom. Is that clear? So which, which human association shares common boundary? common custom with an autonomous government? The answer is nation state. Now let me attempt a fine definition of nation state. A nation state is a nation that has obtained independence. Are you getting me now? A nation state consists of a group of people who are homogeneous, that is they have same culture and they have obtained independence. An example of a nation state is Israel. Another example of a nation state is Sweden. Another example of a nation state is United kingdom. So the correct answer here is D. Now to the next question. A group of people who commonly possess franchise. You, got, you observe that this question is quite different from possessing common franchise objective. There is a difference between possessing common franchise objective and commonly possessing franchise. So when we have the same voting objective, we belong to the same political party. But when we have common, when, when we commonly possess franchise, we might not actually vote in, in, in the same direction. But do we all have franchise? Yes. And what is that franchise? The right to vote and be what? Voted for. So the answer here should be voters. If you don't see voters, you pick electors. If you don't see electors, you pick electorate. So it won't be people. Because, you know, those exercising franchise. They, they, they constitute a, a small, you know, a, a small percentage of the total population in the country. You might have a country of about 200 million, 200 million like Nigeria, while only about 70 million might be exercising franchise. So it won't be all the people. Will it be political party? If the question was like this, that a group of people who possess common franchise objective, that is, they have political agenda that is uniform and they want to go in the same direction. That's a political party. So the correct answer is electors or voters or electorate. The correct answer is D. A group of people who possess a common interest within a socio-political group. 
This is a smart and tricky question. A social political group is a political party. Are you getting now? A part, a political party is, 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 is a human association that is so organized to aggregate interest. In which direction? In the direction of winning election. In the direction of forming government. In the direction of capturing political power. So what distinguishes? What differentiates? What alienates, you know, a political party from other human associations like prayer groups? It is the sole objective and agenda of doing what? Of winning political office, of forming government, and of capturing power. So the question says a group of people who possess a common interest within a political party. So having established that a social political group refers to a political party, we are now looking at a group of people within that political party who have a common interest, you know, this goes to show us that not everyone within a political party like PDP, like APC or Labour Party, not everyone within a political party will even have the same agenda. Some might tilt for Shibanjo, some might tilt for Ameshi and so on and so forth. So what is that? that nucleus what is that group within a party you know that consists of people with the same interest it refers to a caucus so you can have different caucuses mind you if you were to see a question like this the the, the smallest arm of a political party that is what but the smallest the units that is the smallest interest driven units within a political party that is a caucus so the correct answer here is d so before we take the 11th question, let me take this time to remind you guys to hit the notification bell and also subscribe to our YouTube channel at The Rock Tutors. Number 11. Government led by superior citizens is dash. This question demands patience. Superior can come in different ways. So we have to look at what does the question mean and what does it not mean? What are they asking for and what are they not asking for? The question is not telling us that superior by H. Are you getting me now? Had this been the question was government led by citizens who are superior by H, you know, the answer would have been gerontocracy. Because gerontocracy refers to a system of government led by few old persons, few adult persons, few senior citizens, few elderly persons. So the question is not asking us for that. It won't be feudalism. Feudalism is not even about government led by superior citizens. Feudalism has to do with a system of government that was practiced in the medieval Europe before Industrial Revolution, whereby all lands were owned by the monarch in Europe. These lands were then vested in the hands of loyal lords, barons, nobles, or knights. Now, these were rich and big guys in the society. Now, could they plow these lands by themselves? No. So there was the need to lease and rent this out, land out this land out to the lower cadre in the society, the, the class and the cadre of the serfs, of the vassals, of the slaves, of the tenants, of the peasants, of the laborers, of the villagers. Is that clear? So that's feudalism. It is not even associated with this. It won't be plutocracy. Why won't it be plutocracy? Plutocracy was propounded by a Greek philosopher known as Plato, where he described that, you know, political power should be vested in the hands of few rich and wealthy citizens in the society. So the question is not even asking, asking us that government led by superior citizens by wealth. The question is just saying superior citizens. Having eliminated feudalism, plutocracy, and gerontocracy, we are left with aristocracy. Aristocracy, as it was propounded by a Greek philosopher known as Aristotle, refers to a government in which philosophers are kings. Put more succinctly, it refers to a, a system of government, you know, in which political power is vested in the hands of few elites, few nobles, few educated persons, best citizens, gifted citizens, superior citizens. Are you getting me now? So superior in terms of class. Are you getting now? Superior in terms of nobility. Superior in terms of value of what to offer. Not necessarily age, not necessarily wealth, and so on and so forth. So the correct answer here is aristocracy. D. Now to the next question. Government led by senior citizens. The answer is 
gerontocracy. It won't be plutocracy. Plutocracy is government led by few wealthy. Aristocracy is government led by few educated or few nobles. Monarchy is government led by a monarch who could be an absolute monarch or a constitutional monarch and in which power is hereditary or by succession. Is that clear? So the only answer left here is gerontocracy. And like I said earlier, that gerontocracy refers to government led by few elderly persons, few senior citizens, few old persons. Is that clear? So the correct answer here is C. Now to the next question. A form of government led by few persons of the highest rank is that A, sociocracy. It won't be sociocracy. There is nothing like that. B, plutocracy. Plutocracy refers to government led by few persons of the highest wealthy, you know, wealthy gradients. Is that clear? But we're not even asking of government led by people who have wealth. We're only asking of government led by the nobles, government led by the elites. Those are the upper class. Are you getting me now? It won't be theocracy. Theocracy is from two Greek words known as theo and gravia. Theo means God and gravia means rule. So when you constellate, amalgamate and unify theo and kratia, which means government led by God. Can God rule physically? No. So it means government led by religious leaders. So having eliminated sociocracy, plutocracy, and theocracy, the, the, the perfect answer we have is aristocracy. Government led by few persons of the highest social rank. The correct answer is C. Now to the next question. Aristocracy emphasizes dash. I said that aristocracy as propounded by Aristotle has to do with government led by few persons. But which category of the few? Few elites, few gifted citizens. Aristotle believes that not all citizens are gifted, you know, when it comes to superintending over the affairs of the state, that some are naturally gifted, that some by virtue of birth, by virtue of training, by virtue of education, by virtue of nobility, they, 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 are pos they, they possess the requisite characteristics that helps them to be able to manage and superintend over the affairs of a state. So what does aristocracy emphasize? Is it about quantity or quality? So limited royalty participation. Aristocracy is not even about royalty. Royalty comes into play when you talk about monarchy. So A is eliminated. Quantity of the populace. So it is not even about that because aristocracy is about few educated, few nobles. See, quality of the few rather than quantity. So it is about C, quality over quantity. Are you getting that? So the correct answer here is C. Now to the next question. Under aristocracy, now under aristocracy, A says few citizens rule. You know, few citizens rule under plutocracy, under theocracy, under gerontocracy, under militocracy, under cacistocracy. Is that clear? So it does not specific about aristocracy. So A is eliminated. B says best rulers rule. Are you getting now? So it is not even about best rulers. Are you getting now? It is about the best of the citizens. It is about the nobles. It is about the educated persons. Those categorized as the aristocrats in the society. People at the upper echelon of the society, the, the gifted persons, the most intelligent persons, the philosophers in the societies. So the correct answer here is nobles. Under aristocracy, nobles rule. Now to the next question. Under which system is the executive presidency separate from the legislature? Now, when we speak of executive presidency, executive presidency comes into play under a presidential system of government. Do we have a president under any other system of government? Yes. Between 1963 and 1966, Nigeria was led by Prime Minister Tafawa Abubakar Balewa. Are you getting that? As Prime Minister, he was the head of government. But on the other hand, we had a president, Dr. Unambi Azikiwe. Now, while Tafawa Balewa was exercising real and administrative powers as the head of government and prime minister, the president, Unambi Azikiwe, was exercising nomina, titular, and ceremonial functions. So he didn't even have real functions, something like a figurehead. Is that clear? So 
Under which system do we have the executive presidency separated from the legislature? Under parliamentary, cabinet, or Westminster system, the, the, we, we have a president and not an executive president. So you can only have an executive president under a presidential system. And because of the concept of separation of powers, which you can only get under presidential system of government, the executive president is not a member of the legislature, unlike under parliamentary system, in which the Prime Minister as executive head is also a member of the legislature. So the correct answer here is presidential republic. Now to the next question. Under which system do we have a ceremonial slash non-executive president on one hand and a separate governmental head who is in office at the player of the legislature? Let us interpret that question. A ceremonial and non-executive president occurs only under a parliamentary system of governments. Are you getting now? In UK, we have so in between 1963 and 1966, we had a ceremonial and non-executive president, Dr. Unamdi Azikiwe. He had nominal duties, titular duties, ceremonial duties. While we had a separate governmental head, Abubakar Tafa Balewa was the head of government then, and he was in office at the player of the legislature. What does it mean for the head of government to be in office at the player of the legislature? It just means that it could be removed through a vote of no confidence passed by the legislature. Now, under which system of government can you have head of state, different from head of government, and vote of no confidence, all occurring together? You can only get that under a parliamentary system. So, the correct answer here is parliamentary republic. If you don't see parliamentary republic, if you see parliamentary system, that's correct. If you see cabinet system, that's correct. If you see Westminster system, that's correct. If you see bicephalous executive, that's also correct. Now to the next question. A nominal royalty functioning alongside a separate administrative head with real powers is a feature of Dash. Now, the question says nominal royalty. Royalty refers to a monarch who could be a king or queen, emperor or empress. Now, the question now says nominal royalty. Anything nominal does not have real power. So, we are talking about a titular monarch. A monarch that is not absolute. A monarch who is just like a, nominal, a, a, a titular and ceremonial head. So, when we have a titular king on one hand, and we have somebody functioning as the administrative head with real powers on the other hand. That speaks of monarchical parliamentary. You know, we have two types of parliamentary system. We have republican parliamentary and monarchical parliamentary. United Kingdom is practicing monarchical parliamentary in which the head of state is a monarch, where there is a separate person functioning as the head of government or administrative head. As the prime minister. So between 1960 and 1963, Nigeria practiced monarchical parliamentary. Were we independent? Yes. But the Queen of England was our head of state from 60 to 63, while Tafar Balewa was our head of government and administrative head. But by virtue of the Republican Constitution of 1963, we abolished monarchical parliamentary and we began operating Republican parliamentary, in which we had a president, Dr. Nnamdi as the ceremonial president and the prime minister or administrative head on the other hand, Abubakar Tafawa Balewa. So the correct answer here is monarchical parliamentary. D, now to the next question. A nominal royalty functioning alongside a distinct administrative head with real powers is dash. This question is quite similar to the earlier question. A says parliamentary republic. Under republican parliamentary or parliamentary republic, it is not about a royalty. We have an head of state who is a president. But we are talking about a system of government in which the head of state, the ceremonial head, will be a king or queen, emperor or empress. So it says cabinet system. No. The correct answer here is constitutional monarchy. Why is it constitutional monarchy? You know, we have two types of monarchy. Absolute monarchy and constitutional monarchy. 
Under absolute monarchy, supreme powers of the state are vested in the hands of the monarch, who is the law or could be above the law. While under constitutional monarchy, we have a monarch who is regulated by the constitution and consigned to only ceremonial functions, but with another person known as a prime minister functioning with real administrative and executive responsibilities. So the correct answer here is C, constitutional monarchy. Now to the next question. An inverse of democracy is dash. Now, what is democracy? Democracy originated from ancient Greece, from two Greek words, demos and kratia, or kratos. Demos meaning people or humans, and kratia meaning rule. So by the time you unify and constellate the two, demos, kratia, people, rule. If you bring rule here, it, it will be ruled by the people or government by the people. No wonder former U.S. president between 1861 and 1865, Abraham Lincoln said, Democracy, when he gave the famous Gettysburg Address, that democracy has to do with government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Now, democracy is about the masses, the majority. Democracy is about popular participation. Having the greatest number of persons participate in the political process, we are not asking for the inverse. Inverse has to do with the opposite. So what is the opposite of democracy? While democracy will allow the majority to participate, oligarchy will allow few to participate. What is oligarchy? Oligarchy refers to a system of government in which political power is vested in the hands of few persons. Mind you, we now have types of oligarchy, aristocracy, plutocracy, and so on and so forth. But oligarchy is just about few persons. Is it few rich or poor, few educated or illiterate? No, just few persons. So while democracy allows the vast majority, oligarchy allows the few. And in 1911, according to Robert Mitchells, when he wrote about the iron law of oligarchy, he said that most democratic and representative system will ultimately degenerate into oligarchy as time goes on. So the correct answer here is C, oligarchy. Now to the next question. Before we read the 21st question, I would like to take the time how to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell. And also to inform you that very soon, our online live classes will be, will, be, will be commencing. Let's do well to follow. Now to the 21st question. A form of government in which the authority and powers of the hereditary ruler are not unlimited is dash. Authority and powers of the hereditary ruler. Who is an hereditary ruler? Someone who acquires political power through hereditary means, through inheritance, through succession. Who is that? A monarch. So we are now asking that which type of monarch has his powers in a manner that is not unlimited? I'll take that again. Which hereditary ruler or monarch possesses powers that are not unlimited? That's double negative. Not unlimited means limited is that clear so the question will now appear like this a monarch whose powers are limited you know comes up under dash at this being the question is like this that his powers are are unlimited that will be absolute monarchy where you with absolute and supreme powers but when the powers authority roles duties and responsibilities of an hereditary ruler or a monarch when the powers are limited that speaks and tends towards constitutional words, monarchy, whereby the constitution regulates the powers that the monarch can exercise. So the correct answer is what? Constitutional monarchy. See, now to the next question. A state is dash when it is non-monarchical in governments. A state is either republican or monarchical. Either republican or military. Are you getting now? So republican can also suffice for civilian. Any state that is ruled by an elected citizen is a republic or a dispensation in which citizens freely elect their leaders. I'll take that again. A state ruled by an elected citizen is a what? Republic or any period, eon, or dispensation in which citizens freely elect their leaders. So when a state is non-monarchical, it is what? It is republican. 
A state is republican when it is not following monarchy. A state is civilian when it is not following monarchy. A state is republican when it is not following military. A state is republican when a civilian when it is not following military system of government. So the correct answer here is D, republican. Now to the next question. The breaking away of a part from the whole of a state is dash. In government, this is called secession. When a part of a country attempts to, 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 to divide, to, to, to secede, to break away in governments, we caption and tag that as what? Secession. Secession was attempted by the old eastern part of Nigeria, led by Colonel Emeka Odumegu Ojuku in 1967, when he, when he announced freedom and independence to the Republic of Biafra, which ultimately led to the bloody Nigerian Civil War, which lasted for 30 months between 1967 and 1970. A bloody war that was ultimately going to end as a result of a peace accord agreement or treaty, which was signed in a city called Aburi in Ghana. Are you getting that? Between General Gowon and General uh, Colonel Emeka Ojuku. So the breaking away of a part from the old of a state is what? Secession. It won't be succession. Succession has to do with a leader taking over from another leader. That's when you say he is succeeding someone, a successor, a predecessor. But secession has to do with breaking away, splitting, dividing from the mother country. So to the 24th question. Which French philosopher described man as a political animal? No French philosopher described man as a political animal. The, the answer is none of the above. Who now described man as a political animal? It was Aristotle that described man as a political animal. Aristotle believed man to be amongst the, the species of animals. Are you getting me now? But while others belonged to the Homo erectus, man was an Homo what? Homo sapiens. He believed that man was an Homo sapiens because he possessed the faculty of logic, reasoning, and thinking. And he could decide what he wants, what he needs, and how to get it part time. So it was a Greek philosopher named Aristotle who described man as a political animal. So the answer is none of the above. Now to the next question. The political state of a society in which there is no government is dash. The answer is anarchy. D, why is it anarchy? Anarchy refers to the total breakdown of law and order in a country. Put differently, when the power of the government falls and the government lacks the capacity to maintain law and order in a country, we describe such states as having descended into chaos and anarchy. But which political concepts can we actually caption it as? It is what? Anarchy. Breakdown of law and order or a state of total lawlessness. So the correct answer here is D. Now to the next question. Liberty from arraignment on utterances in the plenum is dash. You know, this has to do with political jargon, so to speak. Liberty has to do with rights. Whenever you see liberty, liberty is about rights. Liberty is about privilege. So, arraignment has to do with prosecution. When you arraign someone in court, you are prosecuting the person. So, liberty from arraignment, freedom from prosecution. On utterances in the plenum, utterances has to do with word of mouth. And plenum is the Latin word which has to do with assembly, legislative gathering, where laws are made. Now let us now rephrase the question, having gathered the foundational knowledge. Freedom from prosecution because of the words that are spoken in the legislature is that the answer is parliamentary immunity. You cannot prosecute a lawmaker for whatsoever he utters or says on the floor of the parliament. So we have diverse forms of immunity. We have parliamentary immunity enjoyed by lawmakers. We have presidential immunity enjoyed by the president and the governor. We have diplomatic immunity enjoyed by diplomats. Diplomats, they refer to official representatives of, of a state in another state. Laws regarded as having taken effect before enactment are known as dash. Now, these type of laws are associated with military regimes or dictatorial regimes or tyrannical regimes or despotic regimes. Now, laws that are called retroactive laws, they are laws that can be promulgated or enacted today, but 
giving a backdated effect. So such laws can be used to punish an offender who committed a crime last year. So the law was enacted when today used to punish somebody that committed an offense in the previous day or a previous year. So it is called a backdated law or a retroactive law. So the correct answer here is B, retroactive laws. Now to the next question. Which of these is not a limitation to the rule of law? First of all, what is rule of law? Rule of law has to do with the law ruling over everyone in the society, including the rulers and the ruled, the governors and the governed. So what are those factors that can make the rule of law not to be prevalent, that can make the law not to really rule in the society? So we will know those factors, and when we can identify them, we will now look at which one is not a limitation. Coffee. Coffee is a limitation to rule of law. It doesn't allow the law to rule. Do we have freedom of movement under the law? Yes. But during periods of curfew, can we move freely? No. So curfew has a way of limiting the rule of law. Administrative tribunals limit the rule of law where there is an offense. Which institution should try offenders? It should be the court of law. But when we have bodies like administrative tribunals set up in which non-judicial officers are empowered and empaneled to sit over cases. That is a breach of, of the rule of law. So it is a limitation to the rule of law. Diplomatic immunity is also a limitation to the rule of law. Now, when diplomats cannot be tried for offenses that they commit, it shows that we are not equal before the law. So both diplomatic and parliamentary immunity are limitations to the rule of law. Having eliminated theory, we are left with the immunity of lawyers. Lawyers are not guaranteed any immunity under the Constitution. So the correct answer is C. Now to the next question. Ensuring that the powers and functions of both the rulers and the ruled are in accordance with the law of the land is dash. Now, <laughs> this is a technical and tricky question in which you might have about three likely answers. But, you know, UTME model and standard is about arriving at the perfect answer. The perfect answer here is constitutionalism. What is constitutionalism? Constitutionalism has to do with limited government or limiting the powers of government, ensuring that the actions of both those in authority and those who are outside of authority are governed and limited and captured and regulated by the constitution so much that the law or the constitution holds precedence over everything now constitutionalism can also mean the practice of the constitution strict adherence to the constitution or a situation in which the letters dictates and spirit of the constitution are strictly adhered to so when we ensure that the powers of the rulers and the rule are in accordance with the laws of the land, the, the, this speaks of a, of, of a concept in government called constitutionalism. You know, when this is in, a, is in place, it shows that the rulers cannot act beyond the law. They can't act ultra bias. Are you getting now? So the correct answer is constitutionalism in this context. Now to the next question. Ensuring that the powers and functions of both the rulers and the ruled are in accordance with the law of the land. The same question, but different set of options. Now, in this case, the correct answer here is rule of law. Now, we have two likely answers. We have rule of law and constitutional supremacy. According to an English philosopher known as Professor Albert Van Dyce, he wrote about the rule of law and posited three cardinal points, pillars, and principles of rule of law. We have supremacy of the law or supremacy of the constitution. We have equality before the law or impartiality. And we have fundamental human rights or personal liberty. So, even though constitutional supremacy looks like it could be the answer, but it can only be an answer when rule of law is not part of the options. Because constitutional supremacy comes into play and effect under rule of law. So having rule of law here, you know, pushes constitutional supremacy down in the pecking order. So the correct answer here is what? Rule of law. Now to the next question.